Here in this video we will showcase the full biology and anatomy of Titanus Kong from the MonsterVerse. We shall take a look at the origins, speciation, body design, skeleton musculature, how much food he needs, how much air he respires and how big his <clears throat> is. Just for fun's sake. Let's get to it. Beginning with origins, Kong belongs to a prehistoric great ape superspecies that evolved in the hollow earth, a vibrant ecosystem filled with gigantic creatures beneath the earth's surface. While they share a common ancestry with modern apes, this species represents an entirely new category of life. Unlike most apes, they walked upright rather than knuckle walking, giving them a more humanoid appearance. Sexual dimorphism was evident within the species, as was seen in the differing appearances of Kong's parents. Also, ancient humans who later became the Iwi revered these great apes as gods and protectors. They constructed large shrines, temples, and even structures in their honor. But before the last great ice age, a tyrannical great ape known as the Scar King enslaved the species and maintained his rule until the end of the events of GXK the New Empire. Let's take a look at Kong's size and weight. In 1973, he was stated to be 104 feet tall and was but a young juvenile. By the time of the birth of Kong's storyline, he had grown to be around 200 feet or 61 meters tall. Before Skull Island became uninhabitable, he had grown to be more than 270 feet and finally, by the time of GVK, the events of GVK, in the MonsterVerse year of 2024, Kong had grown to be around 337 feet or 103 meters in height, more than tripling the size in a matter of 50 odd years. With respect to weight, however, the numbers are a bit vague and murky. He was said to be 158 tons in 1973 and officially was never given a weight estimate for his adult form, but we can safely assume that he is at least half Godzilla's weight, maybe measuring at 50,000 tons. Now the body design. Kong was made to be a titan that has elements of gorillas, chimps and also humans. His upright posture is an intentional departure from the hunch over posture of the silverback gorilla like the 2005 film's incarnation, or that of a generic big monkey as was seen in the other previous incarnations. Here in the MonsterVerse, Kong's arms are disproportionately bigger and longer than his legs, which gives him a distinctive silhouette making him less human and more animalistic, while also retaining his human-like bipedal walking stance. He has a round head, a gorilla chimp face, and a brownish fur that covers the entire body except for the chest and parts of the face, palms, and toes. Now the skeletal system. So apes are our closest primate relatives, sharing an identical skeletal structure with humans. While the shape and size of some bones vary, every bone in the human skeleton has a counterpart in the African apes, including the gorillas and therefore Kong, as a member of a titan species that predates humanity, would also bear the same number of bones and joints. The main difference would be seen in the head and limbs, though especially the difference in the shape of the skull and teeth. Kong's head has an elongated bulge at the top of the skull and a slanting face which is less flattened than humans but more flattened than gorillas. Kong has also sharp canine teeth that gives him a powerful bite. This was seen when he bites off the tentacles of the Maya squid after killing it, and also when fighting Godzilla. Kong is surprisingly quick for a creature of his size, which he owes a lot to his long arms. He has a body built for flexibility and can swing his long arms to make an effective combat strike, as well as to swing from one point to another using geographical features and buildings. In Godzilla vs Kong, he could leap from building to building in Hong Kong in order to skillfully avoid Godzilla's atomic breath. His arms are around 60 to 65 percent the height of the body, which means that he has arms which are more than 200 feet or 61 meters long. The legs, however, are less than half of the body height, which means around 150 feet or 45 meters. The bones of the entire skeletal structure, the system, would be as dense and powerful as the most durable alloy known to man in order to support such a great body frame and weight. This means that Kong also has a very solid musculature with very strong upper body strength, especially in his shoulders, chest and arms. This strength helps him lift and throw big objects to climb and fight as well. Unlike most apes, he walks on two legs, making his legs muscles very strong. This upright walking stance gives him a human-like look and helps him move with balance and agility. His core muscles, including his abs and back, are also very powerful, giving him stability and strength for all his movements. His body is covered in thick muscles, making him tough and able to handle and deliver powerful hits. It is also theorized that Kong would possess massive amounts of fast twitch muscles, which would explain how he can easily lift and throw titans with so much ease. Also known as type 2 muscles or type 2 muscle fibers, 
These are specialized for quick, powerful movements but tend to fatigue more quickly than slow twitch muscles. They contract rapidly, providing the burst of speed and power needed for activities like jumping, sprinting and climbing. These muscles generate a lot of force in a short amount of time, making them essential for explosive movements. And finally, these muscles, these fast twitch muscles, they use primarily anaerobic metabolism, which means they rely on stored energy sources within a muscle rather than oxygen from the blood. So this brings us to the energy he needs, which takes us to digestion and food intake. So although Kong has a body that resembles more of a gorilla, he has a diet that is more or less omnivorous like humans and chimps, and needs a lot of meat. He gets it from hunting other megafauna and most of the time we see him chow down on other carnivores and surprisingly never once on other herbivores. In essence, Kong's digestive system starts with the mouth and ends with the seventh planet of the solar system, Uranus, with everything in between including stomach, intestines, pancreas, liver, spleen and so on. And if you want to know how much food he needs, we can do a quick measurement for you. Uh, let's get to it. Okay, so firstly we have to assess the size of Kong in relation to a human male. So if an average male is 70 kilograms, properly fed, a man, uh, that would mean that Kong's weight at our estimate of 50,000 tons is equivalent to 710,000 human males. And so from this foundation we can extrapolate and calculate the approximate amount of food he requires. So say uh, a 70 kilogram person needs 3,000 calories a day. Therefore, that means a 50,000 Kong would require 2.3 billion calories. To put this in perspective, that's what 2,000 average adult men consume in an entire year. Or, if an average man consumes 3.3 pounds or 1.5 kilograms of food in a day, if we extrapolate this, Kong must consume roughly 1,065 tons of food per day. That is equivalent to 2,000 cows or 150 adult male African elephants or five blue whales in a day. It is quite possible that Kong has eaten most, almost every animal in Skull Island before Camazos arrived in 2019. And yeah, the place would be full of his poop, which would be in the hundreds of tons per day. A lot of manure. So for the food that is taken in, we also need oxygen to oxidize it. Uh, so when talking about respiration, we normally think about inhaling and exhaling of air but that's just the tip of the iceberg. The process goes deep into the oxidation of food in the cells and the release of ATP and other chemicals for metabolism. But let's just take a look at the tip, shall we? The amount of air that Kong inhales is so large that it is enough to sustain a person for weeks to months on end. If a normal man inhales 0.5 liters of air per breath at a rate of 12 times per minute, Kong would inhale anywhere between 350,000 or 400,000 liters of air per breath and maybe his rate would be lowered for such a large creature to 9 to 10 times a minute. That's half of the capacity, the volume, of air inside a 747 Boeing. And with two breaths, that's the full amount of the 747. Now let's get a little bit dirty. Reproduction, hey, it's not really necessary, but we gotta know what we gotta know, right? Kong is a male member of his species, so that means he has male genitals, and this would mean two balls and a cockadoodle-loo. Kong also had parents, a mom and a dad, which means he follows the same mammalian reproduction cycle which requires two members of opposite sexes to do the deed and give birth to a new individual. And like other ape species, he would have had close family ties if not for the skull crawlers eradicating the entire Kong population on Skull Island. Okay, so let's do a Kong Ding Dong size estimate. See, Kong is based on a gorilla, and that's how we can find out the size of his schlong. If a male silverback gorilla standing at a height of 160 centimeters has a ding-dong of around 3 to 4 centimeters, small, yeah, that translates to roughly 2% of the body height. So Kong, with a height of 103 meters as of GXK, would have a penis size of 2.1 meters or 7 feet. <laughs> so to put it in simple terms, the size of Kong's schlong is one big show long. Silence, awkward silence. Let's, anyway, lastly, let's take a look at Kong's nervous system and his intelligence. So Kong's nervous system starts with the brain and ends with the nerve endings all over his body. In reality, due to his sheer size, the signals traveling through and along his nerves will take a longer time to reach their destination compared to smaller animals. This in reality should have made Kong and other titans slow and cumbersome, very time consuming to react and move. 
The nervous system isn't based on light speed or speed of light, but on the release of a mix of chemical and electrical signals. A nerve impulse is generally considered to have a speed of uh, 120 meters per second, which would mean for Kong, his reflexes would take more than a second and a half. But we can assume that Titan biology is a little bit different and makes use of a faster delivery pathway for nerve impulses, which would be in the speeds of thousands of meters per second for Kong to react in a human-like manner. He also has a very high intelligence quotient or IQ in that he can learn sign language and communicate with sentient thought. His intelligence would be in the human range as well as having incomprehensible Titan basal instincts. So in conclusion, Kong is a titan that has a very similar body, anatomy, and biology as compared to apes and humans. After all, he is the prime humanoid hero titan here in the universe of the Monsterverse, and a creature that we can all relate to in varying degrees. He is the bridge that connects the titans to the humans. And with that, we come to the end of this video. So if you like this one, then watch this other one as well. And if you want to browse for other Monsterverse content, we have a lot of those in our channel check it out. So like, subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Take care guys.